Thank you for joining us on our news briefing for this Wednesday. We're going to get started with our COVID-19 information. We have, we have Dr. Moreno with us. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Moreno. Well, there we go. Hi, Mia. Good afternoon. Uh, if anyone has questions for Dr. Moreno, go ahead and put them in chat now. I will be having guests later on in our briefing to discuss the 2023 winter storms. Uh, if you have questions for those guests, please uh, plan on putting those in chat as well. So just waiting, I, I know there are some questions for you, Dr. Moreno, so I'm just waiting for them to show up in chat and here they are. So here's your first question. Uh, Dr. Moreno, would the County Department of Public Health say that we experienced an early winter surge in COVID-19 cases, but that we are that we seem to be trending downward now? Uh, thanks for the question, Mayor. So uh, we have had uh, a little bit of an increase in transmission uh, during this winter. Uh, fortunately, uh, we didn't see the nearly the number of cases uh, uh, that we have in. in uh, prior surges. So um, uh, that's really all I can do is describe what, what we see uh, and then go on to continue to encourage people to take uh, steps to try to keep the transmission level as, uh, as low as possible by getting vaccinated, which includes a, a, a bivalent COVID-19 vaccine. And the second part of that question was, to what does the County Department of Public Health attribute the current trend in COVID-19 cases? Only 17.5% of eligible Monterey County residents have received an updated bivalent booster dose. What data can the County Department of Public Health point to to encourage more people to get the bivalent booster? Um, really, uh, we recommend that individuals follow CDC guidance uh, to try to uh, uh, keep the transmission of COVID-19 uh, in our community as low as possible. Um, and the guidance is based on uh, evidence that is available that shows that uh, the COVID-19 vaccines, including the bivalent booster, uh, can still reduce a uh, person's likelihood of getting COVID. And if they do get COVID-19, it reduces the likelihood that they're going to have a serious illness uh, or be hospitalized or even die from COVID-19. So I really encourage people to follow guidance uh, that's coming coming out of the CDC uh, and recommended by uh, the FDA on vaccines and, and treatment as well to uh, reduce the, uh, the severity of illness uh, here in Monterey County. Thank you, Dr. Moreno. Any other questions for Dr. Moreno today for COVID-19? Just checking the chat to see if we have anything else coming through. Uh, that seems to be just two questions for you today. Thanks right. very much, Dr. Moreno. If additional questions come through, of course, we will send them to you. All right, thanks, ma'am. Thank you. And so now we're going to get go ahead and move to our uh, winter storm information. Uh, we're very pleased to have uh, some colleagues from FEMA with us today and representatives from our Department of Emergency Management to talk about the federal disaster designation that just came through from Monterey County last night and what it means to the county, but also what it means to people who've been affected by this disaster. So we're going to go ahead and get started with Kelsey Scanlon. She's with the Department of Emergency Management. Hi, Kelsey. Can you tell us a little bit more about the importance of this declaration? Of course. Um, I will defer to my colleagues at FEMA and Cal OES about the specifics, but essentially what this means is there was enough uh, significant damage across the Monterey County operational area to residents and businesses and public infrastructure to warrant uh, the need for state and federal assistance for recovery. Um, and while under these circumstances, I um, hate to celebrate a success, it really is uh, quite a benefit to have this public assistance and individual assistance become available. And it's a much needed resource for a lot of our communities to recover. Um, the past like week or so, the Emergency Operations Center and the Department of Emergency Management staff have been working quite closely with the building inspector, the fi local fire protection districts, environmental health, 
um, public works and Caltrans to allow people to go back into the areas that have been evacuated. Um, and they do so very thoroughly and very vigilant, 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 sorry, I'm struggling with words right now, I'm so tired, <laughs> diligently. Um, while also at the same time assessing damages to private infrastructure and public infrastructure to help us qualify for that additional state and federal funding. Um, and so we met with the Director of Recovery and the Re FEMA Region 9 Administrator earlier on in the week to really explain what it is that our community has experienced and the losses that they've experienced for several weeks now and likely for the next several years. Um, you know, while the emergency might be over, the real work starts now and it starts in partnership with our state and uh, federal agencies. So um, with that, I will uh, provide a quick update on our local assistance center and then I'll hand it over to them. Um, but essentially the county is working to stand up a lack a local assistance center for um, individuals and households and local businesses who've been impacted to access state and federal recovery resources. Um, we're looking to have that open at the Ag Commissioner's Office Conference Room. Um, we're aiming for this weekend and when we have a firm date on when we can get all of the agencies there as well as um, the uh, operational hours finalized, we'll let everyone know um, but yeah, that, that'll be ca coming this, this weekend. So we're very excited to have these resources in county and in person. I know in the past we've done more virtual local assistance centers. This really is a face-to-face -face, uh, opportunity for people to ask questions and um, access resources. Uh, Kelsey, can you tell us a little bit more about the local uh, assistance center? I think people may wonder, well, if it's just my house, I just have damage. Uh, there, there's a lot more to recovery than perhaps just, you know, maybe home repairs. And so people really should come and find out what, what they don't know they need. Exactly. So some of the agencies that you'll see there are FEMA, um, specifically for financial assistance and referral to other government programs. You'll see Cal OES, the California Department of Public Health, in case you've lost any vital records, uh, the Department of Insurance, um, the Employment Development Department, uh, Social Services, the Clerk, Recorder, and Assessor, Environmental Health, if you have questions about food, water safety, any hazardous material safety, um, and uh, resource manager, sorry, yeah, the Housing and Community Development Agency for permitting, planning, building. So if you had a damaged structure or if you have a significant amount of mud on your property and you're worried that you are borderline grading, um, those are real questions that you would ask of, of these agencies that'll be there. Um, so yeah, well, we have a couple of others that we're still trying to hone in on, like the Monterey Community Foundation, the Mexican Consulate, economic development and the ag commissioner, but um, essentially those are the types of agencies you'll see. So whatever question it is that you have, even if you don't know if it's a problem yet, come prepared um, and bring them in your thinking cap. But um, yeah, there's a lot of resources available. Thank you, Kelsey. And we're very pleased to have a representative from FEMA on with us to share a little bit more information uh, that the designation really does help uh, residents and uh, we've got, and uh, is it Kalo Henry? Am I saying your name correctly? You're on mute. Yes, that's correct. Can you all hear me? I, I can. Thank, and thank you so much for being on on short notice. A lot of people here are, are wondering, you know, what will happen now that we have this federal disaster declaration uh, with FEMA and what that means for individuals and families. Okay, yes. So uh, what that means is uh, there will be federal funding uh, available for those who may have uh, damages to their home. Um, as well as some other needs assistance. Um, financially, we can provide, if found eligible, um, if found eligible, we can provide uh, funding for lodging expenses, like for those who may have evacuated their home and, and uh, went to a hotel. Um, we uh, may be able to provide home repair assistance, uh, home replacement assistance, um, for those um, who have lost their home like totally. And then also we 
can provide rental assistance for those who may have found a, a, a temporary rental home or, or apartment. Um, also, we have uh, some items uh, that we can assist with by way of other needs assistance. Um, would be funeral assistance. I know there were some fatalities um, and we can assist with those if it was caused by the disaster. Um, also medical and dental assistance, childcare, um, if they were unable, they had uh, um, individuals had to um, um, acquire a, a child care assistant or whatever the case may be. If found eligible, we can help with that. Um, moving in storage, if they had to move their items, um, we can assist with that along with some uh, miscellaneous items. But the first step is we ask everyone to please register. That's the first way we can find out if they're eligible. And um, these assistance can um, be provided, financial assistance, up to 18 months from the date of declaration. All right. And in the chat, I did see a question uh, came through while I was waiting. It was saying, how long does it take to receive funds? So there's not an actual time frame you can give. The time frame varies on processing. Uh, we have to receive all verifications, paperwork, look at the home and, and things of that nature. And, uh, but the quickest way would be electronic funds transfer. Otherwise, we have to mail the check, uh, put it in the mail. So uh, it, it, pending any questions, that's all I have. Uh, I would want to ask uh, for people who may wonder what is eligible, because there, there's a you were describing a, a really a wide variety of eligible costs, but people may wonder, they may have something that happened that they wonder if it's eligible. Where would they get that information? So we do have a website, uh, we, uh, uh, FEMA.gov, um, and if I can't, I could send a link to whomever. But um, there's some information there in our um, individual assistance program policy guide. Um, but we also are standing up uh, disaster recovery centers, DRC, where they can physically go into an office or a location and speak to a representative such as myself and um, they can ask, uh, answer those questions. We also have, or will have soon, um, some FEMA individuals that will canvass the community. So if they see uh, FEMA representatives uh, in, in their community, they can stop, ask questions, um, but we definitely will want them to come to the Disaster Recovery Center once it's open in the county. So the disaster recovery center you described, that would be in Monterey County. Would you have one in Correct. Monterey County? Correct. One will be. I don't think it's um, because it just came online last night. One hasn't been uh, stood up, uh, realized at this time, but we are working on it. But they will be able to physically go there and speak to a live represent representative. Thank you, thank you so much for, for coming on today and, and just providing a little information. I think for people who've been impacted by the storm, they're not quite sure you know, what's available to them and just getting some information really helps get their recovery process going. And um, maybe we'll see you in Monterey County. Yes, thank you for having me. Thank you. And now we'd like to bring in uh, some representatives from our health department and the Department of Emergency Management to talk about assistance programs that have been ongoing and will be ongoing for communities who are returning to their homes after evacuation. We've got uh, Vincente Lara and Krista Honey from the health department and Daniel Gonzalez from the Department of Emergency Management to talk about what is going on in these communities. Um, Krista, do you wanna lead us off? I will definitely be happy to lead us off. I was also, uh, when I was before this, talking to Daniel because uh, being part of the Office of Department of Emergency Management, um, both Vicente and I are in the health equity or the equity officer position, which is a newish position. And I do want him to frame it uh, for those on the line because they might not be familiar with that. Well, Daniel, now they pass it to you. Good afternoon, everybody. So the equity officer position is a, a position that uh, we have added to the uh, management team of, in the EOC um, to essentially advise the emergency, um, the, op, the emergency manager in terms of equity issues that the community might be facing, looking at areas of need, areas where the community might need support, language access, um, uh, 
special um, additions to uh, potentially translations, interpretation, and during meetings. We have seen throughout the uh, press conferences that we've had in, in the county that we have been able to connect uh, translators and interpreters to the work uh, and to so the community can receive the information in the language and they have access to everything that is going out. So part of the idea behind the equity officers looking looking at the challenges that the community has that are uh, we have a very diverse community and making sure that we are addressing some of those needs or all of those needs if possible so that they can have access to information and they can have access to resources like everybody else does in the community. And then um, what, while we were doing that, we were also getting feedback from community members, especially uh, because I've also been involved in the VITA project, the Virus Integrated Distribution of Aid. We have a number of community health workers and the organizations we've been involved in to get feedback from you know people more of the boots on the ground, what they were hearing from the community and potential needs. And that uh, led us to also start working on thinking about our most vulnerable um, communities that were um, feeling the effects of this particular disaster and, and when, when they were getting ready to come back to their communities thinking about, um, in this instance, for San Ardo, water and hot food as well as dry food, and then in Pajaro as well, hot food and, and dry food. Uh, and so we're working with different partners to get both of those things happening. And then um, down in San Ardo for the water, Vicente especially is also focusing on that. Will the efforts that you've been making in San Ardo and Pajaro, we know last night in Pajaro, some um, local restaurants came and, and brought food to kind of welcome people back and help them out because they've been away you know, from their homes. But mm -hmm. you know, what, what will they need in the next few weeks and how will this assistance continue? That's a that's an important question. So uh, we know and in, in talking with uh, Padre Victor and Padre Manuel at the Church of the Assumption for Pajaro and uh, also with uh, Casa del, del, del Cultura, sorry about that pronunciation, uh, that we're hearing about, you know, the dry foods, the groceries to get food um, into the homes for people to prepare is, is important. So we're working on more food distribution for that to support that. Uh, is just an example of how we, we really want to hear from the community about what they're needing. Uh, and that's what we are hearing for Pajaro. But the, the hot food is when you're first coming back and whether there's food there or not in the kitchen and um, they were away for a week. And so we want to also make sure that they're not trying to cook with food that maybe does need to be disposed of. And that's where we were doing a few days of hot food. Uh, and yes, last night in Pajaro was amazing. Uh, and we had a great donation from El Cerrito here in Salinas. Uh, and we're doing uh, working with them as well as Meals on Wheels and a few other uh, taquerias for uh, you know cobbling together a, a variety of burritos that we'll be giving out tonight as well. And just to, just to add to that a little bit, um, some of the other uh, concerns that we're um, you know learning about in terms of you know the conversations that we're having with some of the community partners that we've been uh, working with for the last couple of years. Uh, specifically, specifically those who have really helped with the COVID response, you know, really helping us with with the response now. Um, there is a lot of anxiety around just the uh, economic impact that uh, residents are going to have to be um, that will that they will face in in the coming months. Um, a lot of the uh, uh, agricultural fields here in the Salinas Valley were flooded, so there's a big question uh, in terms of how that's going to impact work um, in the spring. Uh, you know, so these are some of the concerns that residents are are thinking about right now, and uh, you know, we're, we're going to try to support as much as possible and really working and leveraging our partnerships with um, uh, with our community partners. I see Daniel got a, uh, came off mute, so you might want to add to that as well. I just want to I just want to add, you know, that this in terms of the equity position and the work that the Department of Emergency Management is doing to come closer to the community is definitely. Uh, this was definitely been a milestone in terms of outreach. The amount of outreach that has happened to our impacted communities is has been extraordinary. You know, we've had support from all of the community. Our, our supervisors have gotten engaged. I think uh, it really shows where we want to go in terms of um, community engagement and uh, the trust where we definitely, you know, continue to build with our community so that when events like this happen in the future and you know the one that we're recovering from now we we have that connection and that reach with the community so we're definitely um 
we're definitely looking forward to continuing this work and the strengthening the, the connection that we have with the resources in the community. And speaking of, of strengthening those relationships, if people have questions, so say they've returned home and they have questions, where should they go? Are, are, are there people within the community that they can reach out to for advice? Can they get connected you know, with DEM? What do you advise for people? We have so, uh, two, oh, sorry, go ahead, Krista. No, go right ahead, right. Daniel. Oh, I was just going to say uh, 211 is definitely a great resource for the community to call and get information about uh, resources available and the state of affairs in terms of where we are. Um, and th they can definitely visit our website, uh, the DM website, OES website, to get information of the current status of uh, the event. And uh, Krista, do you have anything else you would like to add? For people who are connected with community partners and may or may not have that digital access, we definitely are recommending they call those partners and then many of them are letting us know about questions that are coming in so we can then produce materials to get out and, and get answers to questions. So it is uh, an ongoing process and for improvement as we hear from the community. Thank you. Is, is there any last, I want to give you guys the last word. Is there anything else you want to share with us today about anything coming up or anything you want the community to know? Well there's, just, well, there's been many partners. <laughs> we probably haven't mentioned all of them and they're all amazing. And we, we definitely are trying to get shout outs out there to them. I know that our, our, our Joint Information Center was putting out a big thank you, but we'd like to add to that. And if anyone, if we missed anyone, let us know so we can get you, get you listed. Um, and then um, for getting information out, there are, we, and we are noticing some other even state webinars that are happening. We're looking at trying to have a few more local ones here. And, and, and so stay tuned for that through all of our social media channels. And just to add, I mean, it, it has been really, uh, I, I've just been really impressed with how much support uh, from agencies and, and um, community groups and local businesses. There's a lot of energy around trying to support uh, residents who have who've been impacted uh, by the storm. So, you know, a big thank you uh, to all that support. And just a last reminder, again, we'll be out at the Assumption Church in Pajaro this, uh, this afternoon at 5 p.m., um, handing out uh, some hot meals in Pajaro. And um, yeah, if, if folks who've been impacted by the, the storms, uh, you know, want to get some some food, we'll be out there um, providing that. We are really hoping to focus on the Pajaro residents for that, uh, especially because for many of them, again, they weren't able to be home for, for a week. For a week, yeah. Thank you both. Thank, thanks everyone for joining us on this news briefing for this Wednesday. Our next briefing is next Wednesday. We'll see you then. Thank mm -hmm. you.